Hey everybody, it's Warwick here from Account Manager Tips and I am so excited to introduce my new video series, Account Management in Action. I want to talk to all sorts of people from all sorts of industries in all sorts of roles about what they think about key account management. And the very first of these interviews I'm so excited to introduce is with Phil Bourne. Now, Phil is an account management and sales professional. He has been in the game a very long time and has some incredible wisdom to talk about why uh, account management is so important and what makes a good account manager. He shares his tenets of account management and I am pleased for you to uh, see the video right now. Let's get started at the beginning and just how did you end up in sales? How did you end up where you are today? What okay, um, design or good fortune? A uh, little of both. I was an, uh, uh, an engineer. Uh, I'm, I'm actually a computer engineer. I'm that old. Worked on mainframes. Mm -hmm. um, and I then went into worldwide tech support. Then I was a project manager. Um, and after 10 years of living on planes, um, I'd come into contact and living away from home for long periods. I come into contact with salespeople as one does and marketing people and thought, this is interesting. This is interesting. And I, I got fed up of living away from home full time and went into an internal sales role. And then because I liked it and I had an aptitude for it, went into um, regional sales and then account management, product management, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I think I was always destined to do it anyway because yeah. I was a mediocre engineer, uh, okay, <laughs> pr at best. Uh, I, I, and uh, uh, we'll talk more about that when we talk yeah. about my failures. Um, <laughs> um, I was an okay product manager, which is about communication. Um, so I think it was destined to, to, to do it. Mm. And it's something I think that my personality would lead me to anyway. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Most people's careers, I, I, I'm unconvinced, and mine certainly included, very rarely is it the, the product of a five-year plan or you know, a specific ambition. I think it's more about taking advantage of those opportunities that come up when they come up, when you take on a new role and you get exposed to new things. And you're like, oh, I like that, or I could do that, or I'm better at that, or a new job comes up and you think, I'm going to go for that. As you would imagine, I'm going to say a bunch of contentious things. <laughs> and, and let's start now. Yeah. I think good salespeople, good account managers um, are born, not made. Yeah. Now, that is a very contentious thing to say. It is controversial. But I believe you have to have that spark within you. And it's yeah. about communication. It's about um, self-belief. It's about being driven. Not yeah. in a manic way. Some people have it and some don't. And you mm. need to decide um, if it's for you or not. Yeah. I've worked with some excellent people um, that couldn't close. Yeah. Couldn't close. Did all the right things, mm. had communication skills, but couldn't say, thank you very much now, Warwick, but what do I do? For you to give me the order, they yeah. couldn't. And that ultimately is why you're there. What do we need to do the next stage? Yeah, you know. And I, I, I think there is. You can hone, you can adapt, you can learn. But I, mm. I believe you're born with it, or you're not. I think there's probably an element of truth to that because you look at any kind of skill, whether it's being a mathematician or a data scientist or a nuclear physicist or an artist or a dancer, there are inherent things that no matter, Absolutely. do you have, a, a, have an exceptional career in those fields? There has to be a certain intrinsic, je ne sais quoi, that little lightning in a bottle, that th those certain elements combined that will make you a, a natural for the job. And I think probably what you're talking about is, you know, being successful, being a natural, being a good, you know, ex excellent, you know, in, in sort of those roles, there are going to be some qualities. I agree, I agree with you. What those are, you know, maybe we, we might have a disagreement about, but I think you, you know, anybody can do anything mediocre. As my grandfather said, the guy, uh, the sexy statement is not meant to, but the only guy you've got to please is the guy that, sh that looks back at you when you shave in the morning. Mm. If you believe what you're doing is right, do it. Mm. Do it. Simple yeah. as that. And you've got to be honest. You will know if you can do this. Whatever yeah. it is. Am I going to be a good ballet dancer? No. No. I might love the ballet and I want to do it. Mm. I'm never going to do it. Yeah. But try. 
But what yeah. you, I mean, the other side of the coin is, guess what? I can be wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. If you don't, if you think you could do it, prove me wrong. And guess what? Mm. If the order, if the numbers are good, uh, the customers are happy. I'm wrong, and you're right. Mm. You know, you have to have that cycle of self-awareness. You've got to be able to go. I tried that. Is that something I enjoy doing? Is it something that I'm good at doing? Is it something I need to do? Is it something I can develop, a, develop and get better at? If you know the answer is no to a few of those things, then maybe you weren't born with it. Maybe you're not that that particular feature of that job is not for you. So maybe the job isn't for you. Or maybe you got to find a way around it. Um, it's it's definitely interesting. I think it's that that's one thing that I'm a big believer into is that let's say you know good account managers and sales people are born for sure. Uh, there'll be things that people can develop and improve on because even the best Definitely. actors yeah. in the world are not all on, you know, winning Academy Awards and earning millions per pay per, per picture or even in the pictures because there were things around casting and relationships and networking that they didn't do. All the great beauties in the world aren't on Vogue because they didn't have the right connections. They didn't attend modeling appointments. They don't have an, they didn't go and impress an agent and get signed. So it, certain gifts doesn't doesn't preclude you or doesn't automatically guarantee success either but absolutely yeah mm. absolutely as i said i've known people that are uh that have everything just couldn't close yeah or were uncomfortable presenting you know uh, uh and that's uh, and couldn't get comfortable like it wasn't that they were uncomfortable and then became comfortable they never were able to become comfortable. And I think that's not the, their back. the difference, isn't it? Not their back. Not their mm. back. So mm. in a, you know, in a support role, they are superb. And the more complex the sale, the more people you're going to rely on to do that. Yeah. So. I've often seen this too with managers, particularly in sales. You know, the top performers in sales, they'll be invited to be a manager because they're like, oh, well, you're good at sales. You're our best performer. Why don't you go lead the team as well? And then they lead the team and they're like, I hate being a manager. And then they'll stand down and they become, go back to being a sales manager and crushing targets and getting oodles of, you know, commissions. You've now described me. You've now There you go. Me. See, well, you knew though. You weren't born with it. I, I, I can, I, as a project manager, I was okay. Yeah. I was okay. And I can, I can handle some dotted line reports. But yeah. when I have a team, it's because... In my heart of hearts, you know, if I can do it, why can't you? Yeah. And that's not right and that's not fair and, yeah. and whatever. So my skill is not in man mm. It's in communication and motivating teams mm. that dotted lines and let Warwick get out at five, five, bed, bed, five o'clock in the morning, meet me in rural Bedfordshire and we'll do this. I can do that. But having multiple teams brought to me, not mm. my back. No. Not my back. Do you know, it's coming back also to the tenants. I think that I know you and some of your listeners of the tenants of account management. Mm. I don't know if this is the right, the wrong things, but I'm going to run through some of mine. Is yeah, this the please. right time to worry? Absolutely. Yeah, let's go for it. These are no, and, and this, I think, will answer your question. There mm. are no, there's no order, but they're all important. Mm. Um, you talk to everybody all the time about everything. Yeah. That's particularly true at the moment, and that's internal and external. As you'd imagine, um, and, and I'll I'll put this in perspective. Right now, I, my account um, is that I look after. Uh, I have the luxury of only a single account, uh, which is the downside of that is strategic. It's a big chunk of the UK revenue. It's highly political. So before I report anything internally up my chain, you've got to validate it three four times different departments yeah. different people you know you know some people saying the, the end of the world is nine you're never gonna get the orders other mm. people saying you've got a shitload of orders and you've got to support them we have to do this yeah we have orders stacked up from now to the end of september you've got to do this so again i talk to everybody all the time even in the one of exp better expression peacetime you know, it's probably not a good yeah. analogy, but, but it's in normal operation. Talk to everybody. Validate everything you hear. If you need that. True, sorry. I was just going to say, you, you need that 360 degree view or as much as you can end to end of your own business and how your client's business oh, and then where they intersect. Because if you don't, all your tr what are you doing? Like, what are you actually bringing to the table? You're, you're, you know how your product works. That's it. You don't actually know how the client uses it. You don't know how it impacts what they do for their customers. You don't know how 
you fit in with the other suppliers. You don't know anything about potential risks or gaps, regulatory, environmental things. We look at the current situation today. I've been doing a lot of research on what's going to happen when we emerge from this. You know, some of the big risks for us, for example, you know, in, our, in business is that there's and opportunities. Lots of talk about no China will no longer be you know, people be looking to sort of regionalize and localize yeah. um, production and resources and sourcing now because this has exposed such a big risk with everything in China. Uh, there's also people are going to be wanting to um, uh, stabilize the supply chain, which means less reliance on single sourcing. So single sourcing was the big thing like globalization, centralization, one supplier for everything makes it easy. Now it's a high risk and they'll want to bring in alternate suppliers, you know, some no longer will you be exclusively be a preferred supplier. These are all things that, well, look, it's not, I don't have to, I'm not a business owner. I don't, that on the leadership team, I'm not um, organizing any of this stuff. I'm an account manager. I'm in sales. But, okay, now there's a problem. If my client is maybe going to be looking and sniffing around competitors because they want to have an additional supplier brought in, I've got to start thinking about what's happening with their supply strategy, what's happening with their supply chain. How do I establish that I am the best person? They don't need a second one and they don't need to risk me because I'm already de-risked. And this is that whole thing around talking to everybody about everything all the time, because none of these things have anything to do with me, to be honest. Like I'm supposed to just make sure my client gets what they need from the services they buy from me. But if you don't do that, how do you know this stuff? How do you anticipate uh, these things? Uh, and straight away you come to tenant number two. <laughs> I mean, it's exactly right. Yeah. You know, um, the more you know about mm. your customer and their business, the more mm. successful you will be because yeah. Uh, and this comes comes back to the comment we had earlier. I've seen people fall at the last hurdle because they didn't understand. Yeah. The strategic decisions go through Chicago and they're locked up with the competition. Yeah. Or there's a regulatory thing that's just come in. You can't buy British. You have to buy American or whatever. Or yeah. the, you know, and, and the more work you do understanding mm. your customer, because you're right. I mean, it goes back to uh, what I was saying earlier, that if your numbers are good, uh, it's all good. Absolutely not. Your numbers are good today. Yeah. Last quarter. Yeah. Guess what? And this is the, the situation we're in today. What's next going to quarter going to look like? Or mm. the quarter after that? If you think it's going to roll on the same, guess what? It never will. Yeah. It, and you don't. The changes that are going to come... Uh, how will that work? What will it mean? And you have to talk to everybody. You have to talk yeah. to everybody. I get involved, as you would imagine, in innova innovation teams that are nothing to do because most of my work is in the business as usual. People that are ordering 10, 20, hundreds, thousands of pieces of kit. But I talk to innovation teams. What, you know, what government legislation, how will the take of, of electric vehicles change? What we do and how we do it. Mm. If you don't, Again, comes back to my philosophy. If you don't do that homework, someone else will. Yeah. Then when the government legislation hits you and you'll be going, but I don't know. They'll yeah. have a solution up and ready, made in the USA. Yeah. They've covered the bases in Chicago and you're locked out of it. Yeah. And you go, oh. Oops. And, you know, I think a lot of people just rely on a company announcement. They just assume that they'll be told the information they need to know when they need to know. But it doesn't work like that. So Absolutely not. Absolutely. No. So talk to everybody all the yep. time about okay. everything. And again, the more you know your customer, uh, and, and, and the, more, the more homework, as you say, organize, organize, understand their marketplace. Another something, and this is changing the slide, this is, comes back to personal uh, 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 interrelations, um, is you play the person, not the game. Mm. You have to understand what the person in front of you's win is. And it might be uh, links into other people. It could be they're going to get a promotion. This project goes well. If you don't understand their drivers, how can you help them solve the problem? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, and, and, and it will be different. It will be different. You and I are conducting this meeting in a certain way. If I was with one of um, the network linesmen, the language would be fundamentally different. Mm. 
you know, it would be done in a different way, not better or worse, different. Yeah. If you and I were talking to my CEO, language again would be different. Yeah. You know, it, it would be. Or we were in a ministerial meet level meeting. Language, culture, dress, different. So you have to play the person, not the game. Messaging, it varies person to person. Yeah. You know, a lot of people may go from a personal win. You know, how will this make me feel? Make me, will this, if this works, will it make me look good in front of the board? So you've got to feed them the ammunition, you know, and, and, and give them the cue. It is, if you do this, you will save 10% of your OPEX budget. Really? And this is how you'll do it. They'll present that to the board. They'll love it. And the board, you know, you'll get the order. It gets closed. Um, so again, you've got to play the, play the person, not the game. You know, I mean, the more you prepare, it's, it's a constant amazement to me. The more I prepare, either as an individual or as a team or whatever, for a phone call, VC meeting presentation, mm -hmm. the easier it gets. Uh, the reason why I still do agendas and prepare yeah. and learn is that you never know who's going to turn up to a meeting. Yeah. You know, the meeting is with you, Warwick. Uh, uh, and, but you know what? You'll be talking in the morning and you say, I've got Phil Bourne coming in. And your director who knows me says, oh, can I come say hi? Yeah. <laughs> and you'll mention it. And by the way, mm. this happens to me regularly, mm. you know. And he'll say, can I come say hi? And, and because, you know, I want to talk about mm. this, or he mentioned that. And a, t a technical guy walking by, oh, yeah, I need to talk about support. So yeah. regularly, I have a director level person to just come and say hello and, and hijack the meeting in a very nice way for 15 minutes. Mm. Right. If you don't prep and, and aware of things he might talk, and it comes mm. back to, to about knowing everything. You're right. It's around being very – trying to prepare for the unexpected – and that's a big one that happens all the time. Like, oh, uh, so -and -so, I asked so-and-so to join the meeting. And you're like, oh, suddenly now the CFO's here. How, I don't, nobody told me that. Absolutely. Um, yes, but, absolutely. But also, the fact that you've been able to wing it and get away with it doesn't mean what you delivered was quality. What I realized was me getting away with it, me pulling off a lousy review meeting just because I happened to be able to have the gift of the gab or talk to a yes. few things, but it wasn't yes. really my best work what's that doing for my relationship with the client? Is it really, am I really, is it enhancing it? Am I, am I making the best of their time as, as well as my own? No, is the answer, you know, and if I, the more I prepare, the more succinct I can be, the more impactful I can be, the more I can achieve in that same amount of time. So that hour that I have with them for an hour and a half for a review, I can get it. I can get decisions made. We can get agreement on things. I can move things forward. If I don't prepare, I'm just going to run through a bunch of slides and read them at the same time as the client and try pr pretend I've got some insights. We leave, come up with a few lousy recommendations and walk out the door and we, but, then I've done nothing really. I might as well not have it. It's been a waste uh, and of it. Other time. seasoned professionals, which will be in the audience, will know you've done that. Yeah. I can catch tell, up with you. You could tell if I'm doing that or I've prepped for it. Yeah. You know, if you don't read the slides and you're just talking. Yeah. And you can tell because for sure somebody will know as much as you do, if not more, about yeah. the subject. Or well, next time, that instead of 10 people at the meeting, there'll be one because nobody, everyone else thought it was a waste of time. So you suddenly lose all of your exec buy-in or you lose. Exactly. You know, like, so there's always going to be consequences or the things that you recommended nobody does because nobody cared about them anyway. So you've wasted all this time trying to, I mean, there's always fallout, whether you know it or not, it's just, or it could be years down the track and they're like, yeah, I don't know. What have you ever done for me? nothing special yeah sadly. and they're like yeah yeah you're average so we, we, we're gonna go somewhere else so yeah i um plus you know with my foggy memory <laughs> these days it also helps me because we had this conversation before we hit record was the you know make sure you get to all your points like you could walk out the door and forget to ask for the sale you could forget to walk out the door and oh. that you, for the very thing you went in there for because you kind of get distracted and the conversation goes off piste and then you're like, oh, the, exactly. Comes to, and it focuses. So you, you do a draft agenda, you send it beforehand, you get them to sign off on it. And at the yeah. end, ask, what do we need? Next steps, actions, timeline, you know, notes of, ask for order, you know, what and where and how. By preparing, you start to anticipate the questions that might come up and then you can have the answers ready to go. The more prep you do, the more work, easier it gets. Yeah. Easier it gets. Totally easier. It, and it and it's just constantly amazes me. I mean, another tenant of mine that is 
I think is, is crucial is be interested and be interesting. Mm. If you are interested in people and the wins, and it comes back to play the person, not the game. Yeah, and if you're interesting, people will be drawn to you. You will be fine. If you're interested, people remember that. Even yeah. the account manager came. I've, you know, mm. people have said to me, you know, even the account managers, nothing to do with it. He came, he sat in a muddy field or stood in a muddy field and watched so-and-so being done because he was interested. Because it, well, it, it, that kind of curiosity, I think, definitely from a, where, wherever you're ex- demonstrating that, it's, it's probably unusual. I think that's why you get those sort of exponential benefits from it, those rewards in terms of how p- people perceive you. Like, so if you say to your, uh, your client, hey, listen, can I just sit with one of your account managers and learn a little bit more about what you do with your customers? They'll remember that five years from now because they'll be like, oh, my God, no one's ever done that before. But, and then from your point of view, you're going to learn something interesting about the client. You'll learn a bit more about what they're doing. And even if it's in your internal teams, hey, I want to go, go out in the field with our tech guys Absolutely. on their, some of their, their service calls just to see how it all works because I've only seen the, the, the slides. And the tech guys will be like, what? Like, I've never had somebody from sales come out with me. And, uh, you know, and you'll actually get firsthand experience of what gets delivered to the customers. I mean, they're just some minor examples, but I love that. And I've been a big fan of that. And you said to also learn language terminology when you're talking a bit before about sort of that, um, how our conversations will be different if somebody else was here, a different type, you know, you know, you change your language and the way you speak based on who's in the room and the, the business outcomes, you start to talk to your stakeholders and then you can start to talk their language because you're learning it while you're, while you're engaging with them. And then you start to have different conversations and get uh, things done. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I um, go into the field uh, literally with my customer and put protective equipment on and see installations with my tech guys um, and support people once, twice a month. Mm. And it's priceless. You meet new people, you learn new things, you have a new language set, mm. and you can speak with authority. I was in, you know, I was in yeah. a real substation, a real application, installing this in the rain, in the snow, and guess what? We found this, that, the other. And that's something, when you say that, people internally and mm. externally go, yeah. Rather than a theoretical, I watched them. I watched them do it. I was there three feet away when they bolted, not now, obviously, two meters or whatever. Yeah. But they bolted this in and they got it working and this was good and that was bad. It's priceless. And, yeah. and the people you meet, and, ev- and also more importantly, every time I go into the field or, or with my tech guys or their tech guys, I learn something new. We're not talking about having to be out on the field on site visits all day, every day for months on end. We're talking about one or, you know, here and there where, where it's fit for purpose and the right exactly. time and the right person. You, you, you make those do it. connections. Yeah. It, we're talking about realistically one, one or two mornings, afternoons, and you fit it in with something else, Yeah, you know, a month or in my case, nobody. And, and for people who are, are, are less seasoned than us, nobody in my organization has ever said anything about that being negative at all, mm. ever. This is something that a lot of people a trap they fall into. And it's absurdly simple. Always do what you say you're going to do. Mm. Always. I will be there on Thursday. And you're there. Regardless. Okay. Always do what you're going to say. If you can't say and say why, right? But yep. you've got to do. If you can't guarantee something, don't say it. One thing that I always do as well in that sort of always say what you're going to do, never miss a deadline. And also, you know, renegotiate, let them know beforehand that, you, you know, you are going to push it out and don't be one of those. I always address everything that I said I was going to do, even though, we've never discussed it since, you know, like you'll sometimes you have a meeting agenda and uh, meeting minutes and there's 20 things on it and you've done 18 of them and there's two left and no one said anything ever since. And you're like, maybe I don't even need to do it. Like we haven't talked about it in weeks. Like maybe they've forgotten. Don't, don't be that. Your client will remember your teams will remember if uh, you didn't do something, even uh, if uh, no one ever says it, speaks of it again. For sure. And those two items, what will happen is nothing will happen for three months. Then somebody's director will explode because it hasn't happened for three months. Nothing's yeah. happened. Then you get a series of angry phone calls or angry emails. Yeah. You've been doing it for three months. You've done nothing. Yeah. It comes back and bites you anyway. So just do for it. Sure. For yeah. sure. For <laughs> sure. For sure. If in any doubt, 
always, always ask. Mm-hmm. Always ask. I thought My... it was it, when in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Has something going wrong? <laughs> the, the problem we have is we're human beings. I mm. don't know what's in your head. Mm. And sometimes you are talking about symptoms and not causes. Mm. I have to find a cause. Yeah. Okay. Um, Warwick's angry. And all I'm hearing is anger. Mm. But I don't know what about. Yeah. Right. You've just had an argument with mm. your partner. Right, and that colours your whole day. Not not focusing on the cause of the issue, you know, mm. which might be minor, but it set you off. Yeah, um, I have to understand your language, understand what you're getting at, mm. and that works into an externally. And it, at the end of the meeting, phone call, can I just confirm the issues now? Let's mm. just can I just want to rhyme down so I understand? Or a conf- I do like confirmation emails. You know, are yeah. we right? Are we are we having beards this week or not? Because I wasn't sure. Can we just... It's no, and every time, customers love it. People internally. Because it's not... It could be perceived as being stupid because we discussed it. But I want to be clear about the meaning of. You yeah. know, because I wasn't sure. And everybody gets that. I think especially in account management and sales, you your reaction is to jump into solution mode. Somebody tells you there's been a problem you immediately think you have the answers and you jump right in and start to solve them. But you don't really understand what went on. You don't really have the full story. You don't really know what your teams have to say on this issue. And I've been burnt many times before where I've thought, oh, I'll, I can't believe our product team's done it again. And I've thought, okay, this is what I need to And then it turns out it was the client's fault. They didn't enable something. And I'm like, oh, dear. I've gone and done, done it again. So I'm just like, I'm really cautious about that now. You know, I like to be make sure that I don't just jump in with to rescue the day. Uh, I go away and make sure I think about everything. And that, that. That's a very interesting because I, I do believe good account managers are full SARS. We talked about this mm. before we started recording. That it does begin and end with you. It is. Mm. You are. I begin every meeting when you do the round robin introductions, uh, and, and everybody laughs still. I've been doing it for ten years. I'm the account manager. It's all my fault. <laughs> and it, it's, it's all your everything. Live your by the fault. sword, die by the sword. All that. It, it's, if you don't know, you should have known. Yeah, and you should have known. And as the messenger, you are regularly shot, so expect it. <laughs> well, you are the face of the customer. You have to find the root cause and then address the root cause, not the symptom, not the tenant. Um, it's interesting sort of about um, sort of, you know, when you're dispensing advice and you, know, you have experience and you share what you know and what you've learned, doesn't mean that you do that all the time and that you're infallible. I mean, I still <laughs> I, I can tell you one thing and then... 90% of the time I'll follow my own advice, but there's, there'll be those times where I ignore everything that I have ever known and do something stupid or some mistake or t- tackle things a different way. And I'm like, you know, better Warwick. Why did you do that? Yeah. You walk out but, of the meeting. Anybody who walks out of a meeting and say that was perfect is lying to themselves. Yeah. You and I still do meetings go, I didn't follow the agenda. I forgot to mention this. Damn. Yeah. I didn't do that. We didn't mm. address this. Yeah. Because one of the beautiful things is we're human and we fail. Yeah. You know, and and you know, you're right. Eighty, ninety percent of the time we get it right. But the but the, the one of the, the beauties of human is the the ten percent when your brain goes walkabout. And you yeah. That, and well, you know, sometimes <laughs> people just push your buttons, you know, or or something yeah. just gets to you that day. You just, like you say, you might have had a a, a screaming argument with a, a partner in the morning, or the the traffic's been shocking, or your boss laid into you the minute you walked in, and suddenly you're in a foul mood, or whatever, and then you just don't do things the way you normally would or or, or things just didn't go the way you would or you reacted in a different way. So, yeah, I think that's a really important point. It's just that we're infallible. We make mistakes. More stuff. More stuff. Yep. Um, Yep. Okay. Um, This is interesting. This is something that will resonate with a bunch of your listeners is always tell the truth, right? Or a version of the truth. Mm. People will check and a lie will come back to haunt you. Mm. Agree. That's difficult. A... It's difficult. It's difficult. Like, uh, um, well, it means you got to break bad news sometimes. You know, the truth isn't always good news. <laughs> That's the problem. I think um, some people struggle I've with had it. Situ- the truth is, we lost your order. You placed the order through the electronic portal, and it sat on somebody's desk, and the, we lost it. Mm. I'm sorry. 
that's a horrible thing to have a conversation yeah. to have. And people are more understanding than you think. If you tell them why, always remember it's show business. Mm. If you don't entertain them, someone else will. Mm. Playing a part is the wrong. But you're not the star of the show. That's the thing to remember. They are. (laughs) Empower them to talk about. One of the things that people love to talk about is their own jobs, experiences, and whatever. Mm. You know, and... um, it's not hard to keep them talking either. Oh, no. And they will give you these nuggets that yeah. are worth the work. And then you drop into the conversation. Is your sister doing this? She's an A&E mm. nurse in Sheffield. You said that. Is mm. she good? Oh, and they feel empowered because you remembered and you do mm. this. But it comes that we're all playing roles, which is the show business. And, yeah. it, and a lot of that is entertaining people. Yeah. It, and you can entertain people a bunch of ways. I mean, we're doing this at a certain level. If mm. this was a technical meeting, the language again would be very difficult. It was a very senior management level mm. or a ministerial meeting. You know, if we sat down with a PM, you and I, it would be a two minute meeting. We do it fundamentally differently, but it's, it's engaging them and empowering them. That's yeah. probably a better, but, but I do believe it's show business. I think presenting is show business. If you're just cause you're good at working a room and being in front of a projector and talking about a presentation that, doesn't that's a, such a small piece of the whole uh, it couldn't agree role with and in fact probably the smaller piece in some ways if you can do that on your own stage and you can be the producer and you can mm-hmm. kind of be the director and you can assemble all of the cast and you can make sure it's a everybody it's a good production without any you know mishaps on stage and that the audience is engaged and, and enjoyed it and entertained at times I mean, that's such a great analogy for how you can look at managing it your is. accounts. Uh, only three more. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's <laughs> <twist your> own. <laughs> this is obvious. If huh? you know talk, if you don't know, you say, I don't know, and don't talk. Yeah. And it comes about salespeople want to talk, want to take over. I don't know. The most powerful, I haven't the faintest idea what we've just said at all got no idea tell you what i'll find out and i'll go back to you yeah or guess what this guy does or this mm. person they have to talk it's self-evidence brilliant. but but you know don't well i mean they're all nuances of sort of a similar theme around being authentic and honest and truthful you know you you, you want to make sh- i mean i've done that i've been good at it many times just throwing it out there an opinion which actually has no basis in fact whatsoever or having an opinion about everything that actually I don't need to express it at that point in time. Um, and, or yeah, pretending I know, and then having to waste a whole bunch of time later trying to figure it out. When in fact I could have just said on the spot, what do you, what do you mean? I don't actually understand that. You know, whereas, exactly. Oh yes, no but problem. I'll take know. care of people that. People will know. And then you go to the car park and go, what the hell are they talking about? And now I've got like three days worth of work to do instead of asking a simple question or I've got to go cap in hand and go, you know, when you said that thing that I said, I knew actually I didn't know. So now can you explain it to me? You know what I mean? You are, so what's the point? This is a simple one. Mm-hmm. Don't ever do an important meeting on your own. Multiple heads are always better than one. Mm. Mm. If you can, there are times when you can't. Yeah. Interesting. I, I would say you're probably right because if it's a, if it's to win business, if it's to secure business, cause it's at risk, if it's a major compromise of some situation or your, your commitments con- contracts, you're probably better off to have the right people in the room that can make decisions uh, that give respect to the vet, the um, importance of whatever's going on because you want people to know that you're treating it seriously, whatever it is, whether it's winning their business, earning their trust back, whatever. So I think you're right. I think sometimes the rest of the business maybe doesn't feel that way. And as an account manager, you can struggle to get the right people there. And that's what I probably have found less to though that less that I think that people should be there, but harder for me to convince them that they should. Cause if you say, Oh my God, clients ready to walk, big problems, data breach, potential fraud, people are going to be like, I don't want to go. That sounds like a hard meeting. 
You know what I mean? Um, then it's internal mm. selling. I think it's cow margin. So, yeah, yeah one work. of the things that, 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 again, I think we've talked about in the past, and certainly I think is a, mm. another tenant, is you've got to sell internally. You mm. need to know that when I ask you, Warwick, I need you in this meeting, you need yeah. to have faith in me because when I've invited you for meetings, you have, you, it comes back to adding mm. value. Why am I there? Good. Another yeah. powerful thing we can say is, why do you want me, to, why, why yeah. do you want me at this meeting, Richard? Warwick. If you can't do that in two sentences, mm. well, I think it's a good idea. Sorry, Warwick, I'm in Birmingham. Forget it. Yeah, good point. <laughs> don't, don't just invite somebody to a meeting and say, it would just be good if you were there. Like, that's not enough of a reason to get somebody to join you for an important meeting. On the flip side of that is don't go with too many people. I remember I a meeting, I wasn't intended, but, uh, t- t- invited, but my boss was. It was a huge piece of business. Uh, so everyone was like beside themselves wanting to win it. And there were seven people from the client side. We were going to take 15. I was like, mm, that's a little bit like overkill and very, it looks like an army of people now and they're over outnumbered. It's a, it was a little bit too much. I'm not saying you have to have one to one ratio of attendees, but be conscious of, you know, bringing out the whole army uh, if you don't really need them and, and then, have it in context it, of the number of people there. Exactly. Them. And then it comes back to the account manager SAR philosophy about bad news. Mm. You can't come to that. Worry, you're not going to add value. Yeah. I know you want to. The reality is you've seen the agenda, mm. right? There's only going to be that. We have to cut numbers. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now, you're, you, are, you are half of point eight. Yeah, sorry, that's going to be handled. Yeah, your director's going to handle that, right? Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's, you, you, you could VC in if you wanted to. I just don't think that's going to be applicable. I'm sorry. Yeah. And if you break it like that, people understand. Yeah. But, right, I, and I think we've got one more. <laughs> and this is, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm professional. No, it's now. all great stuff. So, um... and, and this one, again, is, is this one's a bit more esoteric, but I think this is important is you pick the battles you can win. They're the only yeah. ones worth fighting. Yep. Learn when to walk away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of that's experience, some of that is gut feel. Mm. You're not going to win every... The reality, even seasoned professionals like you and me are going to lose. And yep. the secret is now I know when I'm going to lose. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? It's difficult, uh, but is it what we're going to lose and what we're going to win? And they're tough calls. They are are very tough calls, but there's some battles you're never going to win. There's never going to win. Thank you so much, Phil. Uh, really appreciate your contribution to today and sharing the tenets of account management. I think we've got some really great, valuable insights into uh, account management, sales process, mindset, uh, and really, really useful. So thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, what did you think? I mean, Phil is so amazing. Not only is he funny and interesting and just so easy to talk to, but he's full of so much knowledge and wisdom. And I really loved the things that he shared with me during that interview. Now, if you would like to feature in Account Management in Action, well, all you got to do is drop me an email and let's talk. Warwick at accountmanager.tips. Let me know a little bit about your background, what you think. Share with me your LinkedIn profile and we can get the ball rolling. I would love to hear from you. It doesn't matter if you're just starting out, if you're a seasoned professional or anyone in between, I would love to talk to each and every one of you. So hit me up. All right, well, listen, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, bye.